Good Wednesday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick look at what's going on in the skies over Memphis and the Mid-South area tonight. We'll take a look at satellites. We'll take a look at stargazing weather. We'll take a look at upcoming events that you may want to take a look at in the window directly beneath me, underneath my email address, which if you have any questions, email me at austin.onik at wreg.com and let me know what you would like to see on here, and we'll be glad to pass that along and start telling you a little bit more about what you can see out there. We've got a ton of information for you, and we'll start off here in just a little bit. Down in the red bar, that's the solar information and moon information for you, uh, scrolling past on the screen. And if you'd like to find me on any of my social media web pages, again, the icon's down at the bottom, and more information available in the blue bar, scrolling down at the bottom of the screen, well down there. And also on this page, again, from Skyblog3, down above the icon, right by the uh, pointer thing, down that direction, you can see WREG com slash weather all the weather you would like to see in one location so a good opportunity to take a look and see what's going on in and around the Mid-South. What's going on on Mars? Let's take a look and see what's happening with the Remote Environmental Monitoring Laboratory. Uh, this is courtesy of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and we like to take a look at this every once in a while to show you more about what's happening with the current conditions on Mars. Well, semi-current conditions anyway. This was taken about two days ago on Monday, the 8th of May, on Sol 1690, and the temperature was 14 degrees below zero. That was the maximum for the day, and also a minimum temperature of 76 degrees below zero. Now, for those of you who are noticing that this is in Celsius, don't worry, we can switch that over. We'll take a look at what it looks like in English measurements, even though there's only two countries in the world that use the English system, the United States and Liberia. Celsius is so much easier to use. Seven was the high temperature in in Fahrenheit, and 104 degrees below zero was the low temperature for today on Mars. If you would like to see more of this weather information, all you have to do is go to mars.nasa.gov for more information about what's going on with the remote environmental monitoring station. I mean, think about this just for a second, how cool this is. Weather on Mars. The ability to take a look and see what's going on, the weather forecast, and information available from another planet. That's pretty flipping cool, you have to admit. Let's take a look and see what's going on a little bit closer to this planet. Any chance of us seeing the aurora tonight? There is a minor solar storm in progress, but we're not going to see anything in the way of anything involving uh, the aurora this far south. That green line that you see south of around Minneapolis, that's about as far south as any chance of the aurora is going to be. So if you're up around areas, say, north of Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, the Twin Cities, Bismarck, North Dakota, yeah, there you might see the possibility of picking up something in the way of a little bit of activity where it comes to the aurora, but at this point in time, it just does not look like we're going to be seeing too much of anything up there. Courtesy of the University of Alaska at Fairbanks, great website to go to for more information. Sunrise and sunset times, again, scrolling down toward the bottom of your screen there. We have gained quite a lot of time, about a minute and 41 seconds of daylight since yesterday, and the sun is on its way down for right now. Uh, be Again, sunset will be coming up here tonight. Uh, into around the area of 7.53 p.m. Taking a look at what planets are visible for tonight, and again, this depends greatly on what the forecast is. We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit. Mercury, very difficult to see because see, it's going to be lost in the glare of the sunshine out that direction. Now, Venus should be very visible out there. It'll be up at 4 o'clock tomorrow morning and visible through about 4.21. Again, assuming the clouds aren't really too much of a major problem to be seen out there. Uh, Mars was up early this morning and it'll be setting later on tonight, so you you might be able to see that in the southwestern skies. Kind of difficult to see, but if you have binoculars, might not be a bad op opportunity. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn also visible for later on tonight, so you should be able to see that. Uranus and Neptune, very faint usually, and it's going to take a good telescope, even binoculars to be able to, good binoculars to be able to see what's going on with that. The moon is almost full. It's like 99.9% .9 full. It'll be full when it rises later on this evening, heading toward its waning uh, full moon phase, and that will be, again, rising at about uh, 747 later on tonight. The full moon actually occurs uh, right about now, in about 15 minutes or so. So at about six, uh, pardon me, but let's see, about 4:42 in the afternoon, and it will rise as it is going a little bit closer toward full. Uh, International Space Station is not going to be visible in the Mid-South area tonight. Unfortunately, the position of the Earth, where we are, and the space station. 
is just not going to be lining up at the exact location. So it's going to be difficult to actually see it uh, where, when it actually crosses on through. So it would be nice to be able to see it, but unfortunately at this point in time it's going to be uh, very difficult to be able to see that there. Uh, let's see if this is going to be actually available. It looks like it is uh, according to N2YO. Uh, currently again, Looking at this crossing on through, it's just south of Hawaii right now, and that's going to be, again, making its way on through the area close to uh, South America, down toward Tierra del Fuego almost, in the course of about the next hour or so on its next orbit, but it's not going to be anywhere near uh, viewable in the Mid-South area, so it's going to be very difficult to see anything there. Satellite picture for tonight, again, showing a few more clouds over the area. We had some leftover showers, so if you see any clouds passing on through early this afternoon, that's what you're looking at, the little clump of clouds right there in the met main part of the metro area, uh, southwest areas of Tennessee, eastern Arkansas, and northwest Mississippi. That's where we're seeing some cloud cover out there. We don't have anything in the way of rainfall really coming up. Nothing is exactly heading our way immediately, but more chances of rain will be back in the forecast as we go throughout the course of the next couple of days. What we're going to be looking for into tonight... The meteogram for tonight from the National Weather Service in Memphis, you're looking at that blue line right down there between the brown and the green. Green is humidity, brown is chances of rainfall, and blue indicates where we're going to be seeing uh, the possibility of cloud cover out there. Now notice that we have, again, about a 24% coverage chance uh, through about the area into around the just before sunset. Sunset and afterwards, the amount of cloud cover starts to climb from 27% to just about 52%. So more clouds are going to be making their way in, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to actually uh, see anything into the overnight period because of that increasing amount of clouds. So chances of us seeing really anything in the way of good viewing conditions tonight, perfect viewing conditions, no. Good, maybe. But there's really just not that much in the way of clear skies out there. And uh, temperatures tonight, again, if you're going to be going out and do some stargazing, as the sun goes down, temperatures will be in the 80s. As we get into early this evening, temperatures will be back about 10 o'clock to the lower to mid 70s. Uh, fairly humid out there, 60 percent, uh, 60 degree dew points. And that's where we again see the a little bit more uncomfortable out there. But we're also going to be seeing more cloud cover coming on through as we get into the overnight hours. So if you are planning on doing some late stargazing early in the morning, you're going to have a lot more cloud cover to deal with out there. Brighter satellites for tonight, not that much to show you. Again, if you're taking a look here with the brightness factor, uh, on the page, that is the uh, amount that we see, again, with the amount of shine coming off these satellites, the amount of light being bounced off these satellites. The, sl the lower the number, the brighter the satellite gets. And when you get into the negative numbers showing up here in these displays from the brightness category, uh, second from the left, that shows you, again, how bright it's going to be. 3.0, very dim, almost invisible to the naked eye. Uh, Tiangong-1, the abandoned Chinese space station, will be flying overhead uh, on the northwest horizon just about 945 this evening. But once again, it is going to be very dim, so you may need some binoculars to be able to see this uh, capture from the Chinese space station there. Outside of that, the brightest thing in the sky tonight will be a Reser's 01 rocket going from south to north. It'll be going right through Leo, and that'll be about 836 or so, and this one will be just barely visible to the naked eye. It'll be going very close to the area in and around the Big Dipper and Ursa Minor right around Polaris, so we should be able to see something there, but it's going to be kind of difficult to see uh, anything specifically there at that point. That's going to be about the best thing we're going to be able to see for this evening. Let's go ahead and take a look into tomorrow, the 11th of May, and show you that if you get up very early in the morning, and if the skies are clear at about, say, 10 until 3 in the morning, you might briefly see the space station from the northeast at about 2.50 in the morning, dropping through Andromeda right before it fades away into the, the glare around the uh, horizon, the pollutants and the dust and everything else down there make it difficult to see down that direction. So beside that, there's really not that much. Now you may see it on the next orbit, but again, this is going to be very close to the horizon, very close to the Big Dipper, going from the northwest back around the northeast from 423 to about 428 and that'll be again very very early tomorrow morning and beyond that there's really just not that much out there that's going to be all that visible more ideas about what you can see out there go to heavensabove.com that's heavens-above.com and that'll tell you more about what you may be looking at iridium flares tonight there's two of them actually to take a look at this is when the uh, iridium satellite 
fades into view. It gets really bright for a second, and then it fades away just as quick. Takes about maybe 20 seconds, 20, 25 seconds at most for these things to happen. So you really have to be looking in the right place. There's going to be a fairly bright one. Tonight, it'll be uh, very close to the area around Arcturus and just around the area, just to the uh, upper left of Jupiter and that bright star of Arcturus that you see there where it says uh, 2134. That, again, is in the constellation of Booties the Shepherd, and that, again, is where you'll see it at about going to the south at about 933, 934, somewhere in there. That's uh, Iridium satellite number 56, number 98, will be passing overhead briefly uh, right about 1040 this evening, between 1039 and 1040 in the far northeastern skies, very close to the horizon, moving kind of parallel to the horizon, and you'll see that passing through Cygnus the Swan. It'll be very close to the bright star of Lyra in the constellation of, uh, the bright star Vega, I should say, in the constellation of Lyra the Harp. So if you want to see that, there's two of those available for tonight before it gets too cloudy out there, and that's going to be about the best you can see. The Eta Aquariids are visible. It's a meteor shower thanks to Comet Halley as it goes through the solar system dropping a chain of debris out there, and that is what the Earth has been plowing through in the course of the last couple of days and weeks. Now, as of right now, we're kind of on the outer edge of this thing, so it's going to be kind of difficult to say that we'll be able to uh, get too much out of this, but it is possible that we may see some of this cometary debris plow into the Earth's atmosphere. So something to take a look at uh, if you're out and about for this evening. You may see some extra meteors out there. Now, if you're stuck indoors or if it gets too cloudy, and this is really cool to do at any point in time of the year, listen to this website, Live Meteors. Dot com. We sometimes feature it in the area below where you can see the ISS live feed uh, just beneath where I'm pointing on my email address. What you're doing is looking at this display, uh, the waterfall display here, that is a scanner that shows you what is being detected in the way of frequencies. When you see a white line like that one showing up uh, right down there, that is a possible meteor slamming into the atmosphere or space junk or something like that as it screeches across the sky. The radio beams that are being beamed out into space for the detector to detect bounce off of these areas that you see uh, going right on through that location right there, and those signals are picked up by the radar, and that's how we can listen to meteors. It's a really cool website to go to and to just let it uh, sit there and run for a while. Great opportunity to learn more about what is actually out there and what's slamming into our atmosphere every single day. So please think uh, about using that, if at all possible, livemeteors.com. Astronomy picture of the day from NASA, great place to go to for tons of pictures. This one from uh, UGC 1810, a galaxy uh, just by itself, but it's in a collision with galaxy ARP, ARP273. If you'd like to see more about that, you can go to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg. You can also learn more about the state of the sun with spaceweather.com. That's also available on my Facebook page from time to time. Also on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3. And please go uh, follow along with my YouTube account. It's all available here. Again, uh, YouTube, uh, available youtube.com and search Austin Onik and you'll find me on there, meteorologist Austin Onik, and you can find out more about what's going on uh, in those locations. Once again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3, wreg.com slash weather, the email address on that section of the screen, and make sure you stay up to date with what's going on with weather in and around the Mid-South area with Tim, Todd, and Jim, and of course myself from various remote locations. We'll keep you up to date as to what's going on. That's a look at what's happening with uh, things overhead tonight. If you want to do some uh, astronomical gazing, good opportunity to learn more. So please go out and try your hand at some astronomy. Introduce your kids to the science of astronomy. It's very cool. There are a lot of groups around the area that will help you out. We have a major eclipse, uh, solar eclipse, coming up in August. Got to get ready for that. Uh, great opportunity to learn more on that. So please consider doing that and get more information, again, from me at my various social media websites. And also, again, email me right here at austin.onic at wreg.com, and we'd be glad to help you out with more. Live and direct from House Onic, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic with an update of astronomy in the Mid-South and beyond. So thank you for joining me for our video sky blog called Skyblog 3, talking about astronomy, science, and all sorts of neat things. And remember, whenever it comes to science or astronomy, please remember, keep looking up.